this is Sultana again with iVisionTV.net, and I'm here with D. Eunice, um, the founder of Net Creole. And I just wanted to ask, um, what motivated you to put together this forum? In regards to the fo uh, the forum, actually, we wanted to do what's right for for the Haitian community. So we have to we have to actually unite in order to to make a difference. So it's not about it's not about the the people down south in Miami um, actually making 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 noise. It's about everyone coming together to make noise because together we we see that we can make change. We can make progress. Just like what's happening with Black Lives matter with the with the black lives that's being taken by police officers there's a whole community of people that's mobilizing together to make a difference so we as Haitians we need to do the same so on social media it's not just about posting things on social media we actually have to hit the streets we have to mobilize we have to uh, m bring awareness to the people and we cannot do it alone it takes a whole community of people not just Haitians but everyone coming together to actually make a difference of someone getting deported, but also I saw that some of them are leaving voluntarily because yeah. they know they're coming for them. And they're using now, the, it's a military operation, Operation Shield, I believe it's, it's called, they're, what they're doing to round them up. And yeah, it, that's what I have to say, that it was built to fail. And so these people have really no chance to stay in the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. I wanted to speak on in regards to getting people registered before the whole registration thing happened. So if, when you came to Haiti, like I said, you have the just so lease, you're born in there, you have your rights, right? According to the Dominican Constitution. But that doesn't mean that that was applied. You had a lot of people that were in Haiti that were born, that were, that were in the Dominican Republic, a lot of children that were born, their parents tried to register them with just, you know, the little ID card, the working card. They wouldn't register those kids. They were like, oh no, your daddy's Haitian, even though the country says, even though the Constitution gives you a right, I'm not gonna register you. To the point where they wouldn't, to the point where they started taking away those people's ID cards. So they wouldn't, if, if your child was born, they wouldn't give your child a birth certification card, which are those same documents that they're requiring now for you to have, for you to go register. So you didn't give me those documents beforehand. You didn't give me the birth certificate. You didn't give me any of this. And then now you, you tell me that that's what I need for me to register. And they're asking them to get passports and stuff like that. They don't have any of those things because you didn't give it to them in the first place. So how can they register now? Like he was saying, it's set up to fail. So it's just messed up. So. I think also too, sometimes it's either too expensive or they'll go and they'll tell them come back next week. Yeah, they, they ask them, they ask them, they, they record the monetary, whatever. They ask them for money and those people don't have that kind of money, you know, to be giving and they don't even have the, the stuff. They, they ask them for like their Haitian passports. So you have those people going to the Haitian place trying to ask for the passports and they're like, oh, you're Haitian? You need a passport? And then, oh, it will take seven months. Seven months, the deadline was June 17th. Yeah. Making a lot of noise. Yeah, it's just yeah. making noise when you play with it. <laughs> I thought it was my heart. <laughs> um, when you think about what's going on there, you can very comfortably relate to uh, the the post-slavery era, the Jim Crow era in the United States, when uh, blacks wanted to vote and they would have a jaw of jelly bean and they would and this is <laughs> it seems like fantasy but this was part of the South. You were to tell whoever's at the voting voting booth how many jelly beans are in the jaw without counting them in order to vote. That's what it a system that is set up to fail, it's set up deliberately to fail. So, you know, all of these examples are just example of a system that was deliberately set up to fail. Something else you got, it, maybe we should think about. I am not one of those people who believe in getting both sides of the question. I am not one of those people who believe that both sides are right, or both sides might have a point. 
I do believe that there is a just and fair behavior, and there's an unjust and unfair behavior. And, and when you see something that's unfair and unjust, then you need to call it out. You do not need to find all the answers to why that person is behaving the way they are. If you see a lunatic, you say, well, that's a lunatic. Okay? This behavior and part of the DR, it's not that they are, first of all, deporting all of these people. You know, it is how they are doing it, what they are doing. And no matter what the justification is, it does not justify the behavior. So to me, there's no two sides. It's kind of like saying, well, you know, those people who enslaved blacks, they had some good reasons. No. Okay, it doesn't always work when both sides have a justified answer for their behavior. I agree. Haitian government doing nothing. You guys gotta realize too, they, those people that left and went to DR, they left for a reason. You don't leave a place if there's not a problem. You know what I mean? So we do as a nation, and the thing is too, we'll complain about, you know, maybe other countries not doing anything, not helping us out, or sometimes they come and help us out, we say, well, we don't need your help. You know, you, always, you know, let us Haitians take care of our business, but then again, when things go wrong, you want that help, you know what I mean? So. Uh, no, I'm not a big fan of that. You, you gave your part away, so I'm gonna have you come up. And then, um, you still wanna go? I'm gonna think about it, sit down. Uh, for all who don't know me, my name's Edison. How y'all doing? She touched on the question I had a little bit. Well, basically it is, um, why do you think that you, you and nor America have really done anything about it or spoke much about it? Like, is it because they don't really care about Haiti itself, because Haiti don't have anything to offer them, or because they're not taking us serious as citizens because we're not doing anything about it? And anyone can answer that, not just the panelists. By anyone, he doesn't mean one. <laughs> Any one person. But Ms. Linda, if you'd like to go, I'm gonna let you go. No problem, at all. Go ahead. I don't know, I think they have kind of like conflicting interest in regards to the U.S. because I know the U.S. has like a subsidy over sugar in DR. So when you have a subsidy like that, you want to keep it that way and to kind of go against the um, what DR is doing and, you know, what they're doing against the Haitians. kind of like, okay, okay, U.S., now you're going against this, but we give you sugar at a, you know, at a nice price. So that might be, that might be something. I don't know. Um, anybody know no, it? Actually, goes to the UN? actually, it's the opposite. It's actually the opposite in terms of economics. Uh, the DR is could, if the United States decided to put pressure on the DR, because they import their sugar, they could put yeah. economic pressure on them because they can get sugar anywhere. Okay, so yeah, it's the opposite. Why is the United States not putting pressure? Anybody know why? We guys know why. Where are we? Why are we not doing it? Right? <laughs> What a lot of people don't realize is that at one point, the whole island was under U.S. occupation. Yeah. And this was the time when um, sugar plantations or the sugar production was happening in the DR. And, and the U.S. was allowing a lot of the Haitians to move into the DR. So a lot of these Haitians that have been there since 1929, the U.S. got them there. So if, if for them to say, hey, DR, let's get these people out, the DR will go back to them and say, well, you're the one that helped get them here in the first place. So in a way, that's why the U.S. is kind of hush-hush about this whole situation and when it comes to the UN ever since this whole constitution came out in 2013 they always they they were the first ones to say well this is a abuse of the declaration of human rights so they they spoke about it even though they haven't really done anything but they have like said stuff like this is not right and this is wrong so well I forgot the girl who came up before but she said that she's she considers herself a citizen of the world I'm actually not Haitian I'm Moroccan American, so for me, when I saw this, I was just like, this is just messed up. Like, there's no one coming up to actually help them, but at the same time, I understand why the U.S. isn't going up. For them, to get into this, it's like getting to it again. They already have their own problems to deal with, and they're not even dealing with those right now. Um, all right, papers. Do you, okay, so who was born here? Do you know how you got your birth certificates? No. 
Not when. <laughs> the hospital gave it to you. Yeah. Um, here it's super easy. You get born and they give you one. In the Dominican Republic, you have to go get it after you're born. So it's not easy getting a birth certificate there. So getting papers is even harder. So, um, what's the other thing? The guy who talked to you, you said that when they decided to lighten themselves as a nation, you didn't see a problem with that. That was Europeans telling them, you're not good enough. Your skin color is bad. You need to get lighter, you need to become more like us. Because what you are now is nothing. So. I felt rectified. I didn't say, you know, I'm supporting it. Uh, it's the right thing to do. I said it's not illegal what they did. It's not illegal. They have a choice. They can, they can actually choose to do that. Floor? Okay. I can say what's not illegal is if you want to use some Tokiklay to lighten your skin. What is illegal? Translate. Is trans translate. Okay. Yeah. Tokiklay. <laughs> it's a skin lightening cream. That is not illegal. What is illegal is removing people so that their own, what's left is what you think is superior. You are classifying people. That, even though it's not written in law, it's morally illegal. People are people. People are humans. So you can't say that it's because it's not written in law that it's not illegal. Toby Glad, that's your choice. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> How much influence would they actually have to, you know, tackle this issue? Because I feel like, you know, we talk about, you know, Haiti hasn't addressed it. Is it because it's not a big enough problem? Is it because, you know, they're having dealing with too many other things? Like, you know, what's really going on in Haiti? And I just wanted to ask that. Go ahead, stable government Haiti. Yeah. But, um, no, but on a serious note, um, the thing is, when it comes to the Haitian NDR government, they actually are pretty close. Like, the government, like, I feel like if there was more communication happening on both, like, the Haitian and the DR, it wouldn't be as bad as it is now. But I feel like the Haitian government is not really saying anything. So uh, to the DR, it's okay that they're doing this to their people. Because, hey, they're not standing up for them, so we can do whatever. So, I mean, because when it comes, we have business relationship with them. We, I mean, like, they were saying in the video, they were the first ones, you know, to come and help us on the earthquake. Like, you know, they, we try to keep it cordial when it comes to the government, but the fact that not even the Haitians are saying anything, they can do whatever it is with the people, so. Betsy? In regards to the people in Haiti, I've seen people in Haiti live what they, you know, make, um, Revolt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've seen people in Haiti protest against what's going on in Dominican Republic, you know, after they hung the man. I've seen it, I've seen Haitians, I've seen musicians, singers, actresses go in, go into the streets and protest against what's going on in DR. And but honestly, maybe the guy you had on Skype has the answer for this, but I haven't really seen anything that the Haitian government has you know, has in place to take in these people. The most I've seen is when the people come through, they write their names in a on a, on a thing while, while they cross the Dahabun River, and then when they go in, that's the most that I've seen. And I've heard that they're setting up some kind of like um, camps where they can kind of like register them as they go in and let them in, but those haven't been used. And, to, and the whole thing is that they don't want to set up the camps at the border because it's, 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 almost, it's, it's the same as having the camps over there in DR. So there's no point in doing that either. So honestly, I haven't seen anything. I don't know if anyone else on the panel has knows, you know? She knows. Um, actually, no. <laughs> um, there is one of the, I actually wanted to go back to a point in terms of, and I'll, 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 mention, uh, I'll talk about the Haitian government, it really, it's not a subject that I can actually talk about because I just get so upset about it, <laughs> but um, economically, I, I really do want to go back to the economic point that you guys were making earlier. Um, if you guys have read the, the the economic data on the DR. The DR has gone through major economic downturn, a huge economic downturn. The DR is economically in a lot of trouble. And so it coincides with the idea that they need to get rid of their poor. Their poor are black, so they're getting rid of their blacks, but they're also getting rid of their poor. And what they're doing, it's sending their problem to Haiti. And yeah, amongst those that they are deporting are some recent migrants 
but the majority of the migrants that they're deporting are people who have been there forever. And I, I have to leave, but I am going to throw again the conflict down and say what are the Haitian students on this campus going to do? You cannot ask others to step up unless you do. I was going to say, when you do protest, uh, do your research, don't protest in front of a business that might do business with the Marine public, but really have nothing to do with what's happening, because you might corrupt their business as well. It's kind of backlash, like when they did protests on the Brooklyn or one of the highways or whatever for Black Lives Matter, and somebody needed to get to their job to support their kids and everything, and they couldn't. So, like, it corrupts other people's lives as well. So, just do your research. Um, the subject that I didn't see be touched here is um, yes, what the migrant pool is doing is wrong, and yes, they need to stop. But once they stop, what do we do then? Um, if immigrants keep coming in, if Haitians keep coming in, if um, let's say all the people we have stay in and we keep having an influx of people and our economy keeps going down, what do we do? I with you on that, that we do need to find a solution in um, the sense that what do they, uh, what does the Dominican Republic needs, uh, what steps does the Dominican Republic need to do to fix what it feels like is its economic problem? But that I feel like is a different question than kicking people out. An economic problem is not a race problem, it's not a people problem. So the steps that we can do maybe is what kind of technologies are the Dominican Republic um, producing? What, what strengths and weaknesses does it have and how can you um, how can you benefit those and move away from things like the agriculture because agriculture seems to be on the decline everywhere and since sugar is such a big thing and they're not doing so well there they're going to kick out the, the problem that's what's happening so let's focus on the future let's focus on technologies and I feel like um, I like certain companies in Haiti for doing it like because we have this problem too in Haiti um, and some of the companies that I've liked in Haiti uh, and I'm going to support and I have supported in the past is companies that are trying to technolo technologically advance Haiti and move it into the 21st century and so that is what I feel is one way that the Dominican Republic can fix its economic issue and not put the blame somewhere else. I want you guys to think about this. This is something I came to my mind. Even with everything that's going on, I'm going to get you, Stephen. Don't worry, bro. I'd like your time to get to you. Even with all the stuff that's going on, I believe there are Haitians that would rather be in DR or would try to go to DR with all this mess that's going on. Well, yeah. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Go ahead, Steve. There are countries in the world that can support immigrants, like the US, and there are countries in the world that can't support immigrants like the DR. Um, they have no natural, they have little natural resources that they can trade. So you see this, like uh, like she said before she left, that there was an economic downturn to this. So they need a scapegoat and they blame the blacks and the Haitians taking their jobs, which not only is sugarcane, which is tourism also. The Dominican Republic is the most visited island in the Caribbean and a lot of people who work in the hotels and resorts are Haitian. And I see the only solution to this, to make them stop, would have to be international pressure from bigger countries like the US. And also, like he said, I, I don't think that, you know, boycotting businesses from the Dominican Republic is a solution because it will affect people who have nothing to do with this. You know, who are just trying to make a living in their country, but it's their government who's doing this. Yeah, and I think that's their government stance. If you guys missed it, what they're saying is literally, hey, we don't have the ability to support this large amount of immigrants. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of them because they're illegal anyway. So I want you guys to look at that. All right. So I'm actually going to point some things out that we um, probably didn't already discuss here. For for example. It's not just it's not just people who are actually um, 
born in the Dominican Republic that's being that's being sent back. It's also the the issue to where those who actually have the right paperwork, uh, legitimate paperwork, they're actually being stripped of that paperwork and being sent back um, to to Haiti as well. So these people are actually Dominicans. They actually have right paperwork. Um, this young lady, she's 29. She's um, a mother, single mother of four children. She went to, to get um, a voter's registration and she was actually stripped of her paperwork saying that she has to go back. It's not legitimate. Both of her parents has Haitian last names, so they're stripping her of it. So a lot of that stuff is, is actually going on. So with them actually coming up with these rules and laws saying that, hey, you have to get paperwork within a certain period of time, they know you can't get the paperwork within that specific time frame. In fact, they actually came to a meeting, I believe somewhere here in the US or a UN meeting, to where they actually um, tried to hide what they were actually doing. So with, with that being said, the UN knows that there were lies within the Constitution and they allowed it to pass. So what we do here as, as an organization, as a body of people, the first step, a lot of people kept saying, what do we do? The first step is to actually bring awareness, which is what we're doing right now. The next step is to mobilize and to go and, and, and sit in, as some people were saying, or, or protest peacefully. So we see what happened with, with Ferguson and, and also in New York with uh, Black Lives Matter. So we can actually do the same thing as well. So I'm happy to see all of the other nationalities here um, that's not just uh, Haitians or Haitian American or Dominicans as well. So thank you so much for, for your support. And also, just as Wycliffe said, we, we like to go turn up, we like to go to, to Pompa Fest, we like to throw our flags up when, when Haitian Flag Day comes around, but what are we gonna do when the time actually matters? So we actually have to be the ones to, to step up and, and go out there and protest. And as Wycliffe said, he called us all out. Mm -hmm. He said, before I go out and do anything, I wanna see you guys take the streets. So it's up to us to take the streets, it's up to us to, to make a difference. And what Stefan was actually saying down in Miami, it's not what the Haitian government is doing. The Haitian government actually took in all of, all of the people, about 200,000 or, or so, um, so to speak. So they actually took them in. Imagine Haiti saying, no, we're not gonna take these people in. Majority of them are not Haitians, they're Dominicans. So if that were to happen, where would these people actually go? So that's, the, that's another issue. So Haiti actually took them in. So now the problem comes to Haiti, like what are we gonna do with these people? We already don't have enough jobs to begin with. Now we have this influx of people here that we have um, to, to feed as well. So what Stefan was actually saying, he's actually mobilizing a lot of the organizations down, down south in South Florida. So there's dozens of organizations that's actually mobilizing to actually put pressure on the, on the Dominican um, uh, consulate and governments and also the, uh, the US government as well to actually step in. So they're actually doing the, the hard work. They actually um, communicated with people in, in New York, people in Canada. So there's a lot of protests that's being, uh, that's being done around, around this nation alone and even uh, Canada, of course. So we have to do our part and we start here in Tampa so that way people could hear our voices. Thank you. I'll take the eradication of racism because when you think about it, how can you, like, as a parent who is a racist, you know, how can you um, put that onto your child if your child's role model is Jay-Z, Beyonce, or, you know, positive um, people who are in this group that you don't like? So I feel that, like, us, we need to, in essence, change the perception of how Haitians are looked at. You know, like we need to, we as you know, college students, we all need to, you know, use the talents that we gain here in this institution and uplift um, Haiti in, in in the culture and whatnot, and show that there are positive, dark-skinned people who are out here who are Haitian, 
who are part of this group that we feel is inferior that are doing excellent things. So then as generations come along and they see that, wow, you know, look at how hard Haitians are working, look at you know the type of things that they're doing in the community, look at how they're all leaders, how they're doing this, how they're doing that, and they're uplifting the culture and doing positive things, you can't say that, but you won't be able to convince the new generation coming in that these group, this group of people is inferior because they'll see otherwise. So I feel that as long as we, as people are, you know, making strides to better ourselves and to showcase, you know, that we are, you know, amazing in every aspect, that we can keep up with everybody else who is looking down on us, then I feel that in time, as you know, that the people who are discriminating and feel that, you know, we're inferior as they grow old and die, that, you know, this probably will eradicate itself. You better get me like you. I just want us to look at it I mean, we don't have to look at it that way, but I look at it as a citizenship issue, mm -hmm. not more of an immigration issue, because you're literally stripping people away of their citizenship. Now they've become stateless, like we've been saying. Now they do not exist. That is a problem. You can't just tell me I was born here and I've lived here for years just because you felt like changing it in your constitution and now you've rendered me non-existent. So, and I think we should go about it that way too because that's what the issue. because that's what the issue is. It is a citizenship issue. Because when you go, when you just say, oh, it's immigration, it's immigration, it's immigration, if you think about it, there are a lot of Haitians there. The way, and I also want to point out, the way, the problem is, is the way they're going about this deport deportation. You take, like I said, you're taking people that have been living there forever and you're just saying, you, you, you're not a citizen, so there's a possibility that we will deport you. So, yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say. It's a citizenship issue. These people need their rights. They're citizens of that country and they don't have that right now. Thank you, Maxine. Um, <laughs> Steven, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I agree completely that these people, you know, Actually, when uh, you just mentioned that they accepted everyone who was sent over there, easily the Haitian government can say, hey, no, these are Dominicans. Yeah. We're sending them back to you. Yeah. So in the end, this might end up really bad and will turn into a humanitarian crisis. And it will affect not only Haiti and the Dominican Republic, but all surrounding countries that have this same issue also. Like Mexico and the US. And so on. Yeah. What I don't want to happen is for this, for everyone to go home and then two weeks later we forget we ever had this forum. Yeah. Because these issues come up all the time. Like I remember when the earthquake happened. Earthquake in Haiti, oh my God. For, for that time being, that was all you saw in the news. As quickly as it came about, that's as fast as it was gone. And then when the one year anniversary came up, oh, we're all touching in and again, we're sorrowful. And then it went by again. And some of us right now, we probably don't even remember the date. But it was probably one of the worst things that happened in our country. So I don't want us to forget this terrible thing that happened. And I'll leave you guys with this quote. Uh, it's by a very famous leader. It says, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So yeah, this is in DR, this is in Haiti now, but it's a threat to justice everywhere. Okay, so I definitely want to thank all the panelists for being here. I want to thank each and every single one of you. I want to close out with the president of NECA. So guys, I appreciate you allowing me to be your host uh, this evening. Uh, Hi, this is Sultana here. I'm with iVision TV. I'm here with Delmis. Um, and we just got out of the um, forum. Um, so um, I just wanted to ask you, um, what makes you passionate about this um, this uh, issue? Um, what makes me passionate is seeing how when you open your borders and you move away from the Dominican Republic and you're in the United States, you see how wrong some of the decisions are, like immigrating all the Dominicans that are black, immigrating the Haitians that are just because they're black, just because they don't have the papers there. Even though they've been living there for 90, 92 years, um, or 80 something years, 70 something years, at that point, you're not illegal anymore. You're part of the culture. You are Dominican. You are not Haitian. No matter your skin color, no matter where you came from, it's like saying a Mexican that was born in Mexico when he was one and moved to the United States until he was 50 is American. He isn't Mexican. He's Mexican descent. But he's 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 American. He's in, he's been culturized Americanly. 
And are there any personal steps that you're going to take within your life to try and um, um, help with the issue? I would like to. Um, I'm going to sign the petition that they gave me. Um, when I go to the Dominican Republic, I always correct my family members. Always, I am I am that person that's like, listen, you can't say that. You can't be racist. Racism shouldn't exist. Um, the stigma between, uh, from Haitians shouldn't exist. Um, I'll, I'll protest if there's protests. Like, I'll be the first one, like just like I was the first one to speak in the forum, even though I was the only one of the only Dominicans. Um, but yeah, like I'll try if the if the, if the option is there, I'll, I'll take it. Thank you so much. Uh, what do you see we should do as um, as leaders on campus to um, bring awareness to students? Well, as president of Club Creole, um, this is the the umbrella organization. I feel like it's our duty to really bring everybody together and also bring put us in a diverse environment so that way that we can reach more people other than just Haitians and teach them more about us and also teach them about the issues that we're going to so that they can see that we have common goals because it's not just a Haitian thing it's a black thing it's a colorism thing it's a human thing and that's how we reach out to people not from our own and also others